A lot of people seem to believe that DMT trips and near-death experiences are one and the same thing, or if they're not, they're at the very least eerily similar. Well, what if they actually are the same thing? What kind of weight would that hold? Would it mean that all in near-death experience was, was some kind of endogenous DMT release. Meanwhile, you know, it's not even proven that our brains create DMT. That's a myth. Now, what I've done is I've found some very interesting tales of people online explaining their NDEs, explaining their near-death experiences. What we're going to do is I'm going to watch a short clip with you guys. I'm going to dissect, you know, his experience, and I'm going to compare his experience to what a what a DMT trip is like, and then after it's done, I'm going to give you a hypothesis of, you know, whether I believe that there's any validity to this. If whether DMT trips and near-death experiences really are the same thing, and I'm going to explain to you how this could be possible and just what this means for us as conscious beings. Hope you guys enjoy. I felt myself going. Uh, I was in a great deal of pain. Uh, it was a very frightening experience. Uh, but I began to, to slip. I just sort of feel myself going. And I remember trying to hold on. I'll be okay, I'll be okay. And it got to the point where you know, I just couldn't. And everything began to just become very quiet. Now imagine right now that instead of talking about almost dying, he was talking about smoking DMT. He tried to hold on, he just couldn't, and then everything became very quiet. Sounds kind of eerily familiar. Let's continue. Every ounce of strength I had, I wanted to say goodbye to my wife. Uh, it was important to me. And I did. I, I remember just turning my head, looking at her, and saying, uh, I'm going to die. Uh, goodbye, Joan. Often when you smoke DMT, it, it's a surefire way to reach ego death and fast. And when you reach that ego death from smoke DMT, you're often not aware that the reason you're having that experience is because you smoked the DMT. You can't just say to yourself, oh yeah, I smoked DMT, because there's no longer an ego to communicate with. So again, this could sound very familiar. And I did. <clears throat> uh, it was then that I experienced experienced what we call a, a near-death experience. Uh, for me, there was nothing near about it. <laughs> it was there. Uh, it was a total immersion in light, brightness, warmth, peace. A total immersion in light, warmthness, peace. Uh, that can also sound like when you hit that DMT tunnel. I've often felt like I was wrapped in a blanket of love as I slowly ejected my body. Uh, security. Uh, it, I did not <clears throat> have an out-of-body experience. I did not see my body uh, or anyone about me. I just immediately went into this beautiful bright light. Uh, it's difficult to describe. Matter of fact, it's impossible to des to describe. Hmm. Impossible to describe. That sounds very familiar also. Uh, verbally, it cannot be expressed. It it's something which becomes you and you become it. Uh, like becoming one with, I don't know, the universe? I could say that I was peace. I was love. Uh, I was the brightness. Uh, it was part of me. I had no recollection of anything, <clears throat> excuse me, anything biological. It's not like you could see something, because your sight is biological. It's necessary here. A uh, hearing is necessary here. Uh, speech is necessary here. It's not there. Uh, you just know. You're you're all knowing. Everything is a part of you, and it's just so, just so beautiful. Uh, I, it, was, it was eternity. Uh, it's like I was always there, and I will always be there. That my existence on Earth was just a very brief instant. Um, 
it's it's a hard concept to understand eternity because when you compare it to time <coughs> time <coughs> requires progression things see a sequence of things things follow each other uh, this is all at once everything that sounds very familiar too right now in our everyday lives, we are in a linear universe. Events seem to happen one after the other. When you experience, say, the DMT space, one of the primary factors why people have difficult time explaining their experiences is because of what he's saying. It all happens all at once. There's no time. And how do you explain something using the limitations of time that we are in right now? How would you explain what it's like to not be within time? It just I've said this before, how do you solve a mystery that you yourself are a part of? You, you, you can't explain something that's not linear from the perspective of what is linear. Uh, there, there's no passing from one thing to another. I like to call it <clears throat> a different dimension, but you can't really call it that because that could be defined. In yes, you can. You, you could call it a different dimension, buddy. Yep. So that doesn't fit. It fits. If you started that off by saying, 40-year-old man explains DMT trip, you would pretty much have no idea that he was talking about a near-death experience. In Dr. Rick Strassman's book, DMT the Spirit Molecule, Dr. Strassman hypothesizes that the reason for near-death experiences is the pineal gland releases a sudden burst of endogenous DMT right at the time of death. Now, he recognizes that he's unable to prove this, Unfortunately, it has been perpetuating on the internet for a while now that DMT is released when we die. There is no proof of this. However, that is his hypothesis as to what causes the near-death experience. It has been proven that DMT is produced in the brains of rodents, and there are a lot of humans who think that it's also produced in our brains, we just have not discovered it yet. Now, if this were true, would that mean that all these near-death experiences are is in, you know, an endogenous release of DMT? They're just drug trips, that there really is nothing spiritual or religious about them, there really is no white light, this is kind of like the body's last ditch effort to ease you into dying and, you know, becoming eternal nothingness. Unfortunately, at this time, all we can do is speculate, and in the realm of speculation, I think that everything I just spouted is absolute bullshit. That's not what I believe is happening at all. I personally speculate that DMT is the vehicle that our consciousness uses to enter and exit the body. It's just like when, say, your cell phone receives a phone call from a friend. We're all aware that the phone isn't talking, the phone is just picking up the signal of, you know, someone else's consciousness. Now, imagine what would happen if you were able to show a cell phone to an ancient civilization they would either believe that this little rectangle was actually alive, or they would think that you somehow trapped a bunch of little people inside it. I mean, if we were that ancient civilization and someone showed us cell phones and they lied to us and said that this was a robot, this was some form of artificial intelligence, we'd be forced to believe them. We would think that this thing was conscious. Perhaps when DMT is released, if that is the case, or say when it's ingested artificially, that DMT interrupts the usual signal of consciousness. Kind of like our bodies are the cell phones per se that are constantly in an active call, and the DMT comes in and hangs up the phone. It closes the connection. So that could mean that when we die, the body just isn't able to reopen the signal. Because in order for the signal to open back up, you know, it needs a living body to operate through. But say we smoke DMT while we are alive. As soon as the body, well, the brain, clears the DMT out of it, that signal re-engages and we regain our connection to the cell phone tower, I mean, to consciousness. Now, if any of this speculation is accurate or has any truth to it, the real question that I'm personally left with is where is the signal coming from? Where is its point of origin? The only way to get an answer to that is to end the transmission and return back to source. But again, all of this is just speculation. I'm not saying I necessarily believe any of this is true, but it sure is fun to speculate. Do I personally believe that a DMT trip and a near-death experience are one and the same thing? I think I do. I, I really think I do. Whether I believe that when you die it's just an endogenous release of DMT or not, I really do believe that they are one and the same thing. Because I believe that DMT, as I said, is the molecule that your consciousness uses to enter and exit the brain, the body. Now, that being the case, when you do have a near-death experience, 
the same thing is happening. Your consciousness is leaving your body. So whether they're one and the same occurrence or not, it's ultimately the same end effect. So in that regard, I don't think that saying that a DMT experience is similar or the same to an NDE really does take any weight away from people who have NDEs. If anything, what it does is it puts much more weight on the DMT experience. Imagine if everyone who smoked DMT truly believed that they were sending their consciousness into like the realm they go to when they die. That would probably scare a lot of people shitless. A lot of people would probably take their DMT trips a lot more seriously if that was the case. And once I started kind of believing this myself, that's when I started to really start respecting the DMT molecule and I started to see it more than just say a psychedelic drug experience, but more of a way to connect with source. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a big like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for weekly philosophical type content. I'm curious to know what a lot of you guys think. Do you guys believe that say when you die, it's just a cause of DMT being released? Do you believe that an NDE and a DMT trip are one and the same? I mean, people have DMT trips where they see fucking clowns. They see little gnomes. Does this mean that those DMT gnomes are like spirits in the death world? I mean. Who knows, right? Like, some DMT trips are just so wacky, it kind of makes you think maybe they aren't the same thing. Why are DMT trips so variable? How come some trips can be just seeing bright patterns and colors, and other trips can be like you are experiencing all of eternity in an instant? I, I mean, there's just so much diversity in DMT trips. It really is hard to say whether or not they are the same thing considering there's not as much diversity in near-death experiences. I don't know, that's just something to think about, so I'm curious what you guys think. Anyway, again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time, stay safe everybody. If you're going to take a substance like DMT, always start small, titrate your doses, and yeah, don't dive headfirst into it. That's my little bit of advice. Till next time, take care guys.